there. Plus, you're a BKB buyer, so you're going to get stunned through it anyway. Those Miranas, Weavers. Yeah. And you can always itemize versus a Nursa. Even as a Phoenix, you can just Halbert. rush that Halberd. Yep. It's actually a very decent build, so it's an option for bait. Of course, the catch is Fly to Moon do have that final pick, so maybe this Ursa is more of this kind of draw attention onto me type core to enable something else in the draft. I think uh, when you're playing around Visage as well, you want to have high tempo. That mm -hmm. Ursa activates you earlier. It also allows you to go for that Roshan very early on with that whatever you buy on Visage, basically. Hel Helm of Dominator, Medallion, Blast, whatever. Okay, this is something that will allow you to itemize this, properly versus these I heroes. Was, bait, bait is like really winning this draft right yeah. now pretty hard. <laughs> um, but I don't know uh, what Fly to Moon's like last pick will be. It, this Fly to Moon line is just weird. This is really weird, but this is a dream bristle game, especially when you have a Beastmaster already on the team. You get massive damage from your ulti, now attack speed from the Beastmaster, plus an Oracle behind you, so you don't need to fear bat. Another hard counter to Visage, mm. because you just don't get touched. Like, you don't take damage from this lineup right now. And you also own Ursa, because you just spam Goo. Even if he ults it off, you Goo him again. Ursa gets kited quite easily, natural Halberd buyer. If Bait were going to win a game based on their opening four picks, this, this is it. Looks solid, yeah. It's really good. I, lo I love how we've been able to suddenly peek up. We've like we're seeing some light for bait right now. Is there anything that's come to your mind that fly to moon? If we're not looking just at bait's draft, what would complete theirs right now? Because you said it's a bit, you know, it's very wonky. Yeah, I'm not of. really sure. You need magical damage, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. I could see maybe Necro, offlane, but it's Oracle. The, yeah, that's it's just true. really awkward. I, yeah. I I feel like they they made some really questionable maneuvers that's all i'm gonna say i also think it's a visage off lane because a visage mid just does not make sense to me in, in mm. this situation i don't think there's any off laner that really remedies the game state you found yourself in at the moment what does bait need to complete the draft right now because as you said with these four picks already it's looking pretty r well rounded up right Nothing too wacky, just a classic Dendi hero, they maybe. They actually ban out that Necro. Even though they have the Oracle, they just respect it. They ban it out because of the counters to the Bristleback, yeah. right? I think it's a, ni it's a nice Quap game. Mm. Uh, don't really like Puck at all against Visage. Quap's a bit weak, but I think it's just the right hero here. You have pretty limited lockdown on the uh, side of Fly to Moon, and you have these two really beefy cores. You just want something that can really easily rotate around through the yeah, lane. They just go with the Quap. Yeah. I like it. Now the, pop. Mm, now the the question is, will Fly to Moon uh, move this Visage away from mid lane? Like Kyle has said, perhaps on the off lane or even on the safe lane, play around it a bit, maybe put the Ursa in the lane versus the, the Bristle. I'm not sure how that would go, but maybe move the Visage around from the mid lane. Now, this matchup, Visage can win after level 6, obviously, but the question is, how much will you suffer until you get that 6? If you buy a lot of region, perhaps a headdress, then you can stand against Quap, but Dendi will have a very good lane here. No matter what, then these Quap should be really strong. Now the question is, what do Fly to Moon do about that? Do they relegate it? Do they go for a different Iceberg hero? Something like Silencer banned out as well. It's decent versus Oracle, versus Quap, versus Bristle, versus Phoenix. Something that he loves to play. Do you like something like the Kunkka, so you can lock down the Quap? Take her out of the fight quickly, or just thinking iceberg heroes, things we see, some like the Kunkos, for example, yeah. or Tiny is another one that he likes to play a lot of. It's possible Tiny is an impossible hero in this game. I could yeah. see a Kunkka, but I, Fly to Moon's just so single target right now. Uh, I'm gonna go for a TA. Cannot protect themselves. All right, it's yeah, it's a the mid matchup is yeah. pretty tough for Quap here. Uh, it can really go be either way. It's a very high skill matchup. Concern is that if TA snowballs, you just run over this game. It's effectively all physical damage, all mass, minus armor on Fly to Moon. They're going to need Roche. Like, if there was a game Bait could win, it's this it one is, right yeah. here. It's this one. Like, they have a really oh. good shot. Build a bunch of Halberds on Phoenix, on your uh, Bristleback. You're able to deal with both your and the TA that way. They definitely have a good shot, but they need to fight around that Roche bit. With the Egg, they can do it. But, yeah, we'll see. So where you sin, you gotta make a choice. Is this enough to put you in Bates' corner, cheering them on, saying they've got this? They're gonna oh. force a third game. I, I, I don't really. I think it's a relatively 50-50 draft. It's just gonna come down to play. Okay. Uh, you've got to try and slow the tempo down, make some nice rotations. Bait gets ahead early. Uh, you know, it's tough to say that you think the team that hasn't won a game will win one, but this is by far their best draft in terms of their five heroes and also one of the best 
like in terms of how they'll play against the enemy draft. So, it, it's so you'll go with Fly to Moon. Ah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it hurts. I don't know. Come on, give a hell Mary. This is this is Bates' moment in your eyes. From what this I'm is not going to happen. No, production. I'm not making a kiss bet on yeah. this one. It's right. it's up in the air. It's going to come down to play. It's just Dota two, baby. Let's sit and hope we get a treat. Well, fingers crossed. This can work out for Bait. Possibly one of the best drafts we've seen from them in a while. And hopefully they can actually get us a third game here tonight. We're going to throw it across our casters again. B Cop, Tsunami. Do you see the light? Do you believe in Bait? Are you buying stock? I, uh, I'm i buying some stock. I'm throwing my 401k in there. My salary is going to go oh, into that. Things that I don't actually have. I want a third oh. game. I mean, there's no kiss on the line this time. So I'm a little less inclined to do so. But... I just want to see more than a 19-minute game. I want to see a third game in this series. Give me it all. Please. Maybe you can get a kiss from Tsunami if uh, Bait wins. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just move whoa. it from You're the panel and not bet to you guys. <laughs> You're not giving his well, You were away. happy to make bets on Kyle and me. Like, come on. Stop whoring Tsunami out. I was just going to spectate us all. I'm not, I'm not here to join in. I'm not a participant uh, here. You're a watcher. Much as hell, I'm not, I'm not putting in any stock either. If there was ever a game, yes, that bait could win. This is one game that I can finally determine their player skill because for all the other drafts that I've seen, it's very difficult for me to be like, oh yes, this is how good the bait players are. Because I can't tell, because they're playing unplayable drafts. Here, it's uh, it, it will come down to skill. If they manage to not get murdered in the early game by this Templar Assassin, then I could definitely see them taking it. Um, but I don't know how good they are yet. As a team, as, uh, as individual players, obviously they're all mechanically skilled and they all have their own list of accomplishments, but I, the jury's still out, and this will be the game that really has me determining if this roster has potential. Yeah, you know, you're talking about the early game being a very important part here for the bait lineup. That is something that we talked about in game one and uh, something that they couldn't get done. Uh, I, you know, I want to have faith that there will be a game three. I want to have faith that, uh, you know, bait can finally pull one out here. But, I mean, that, that last game wasn't exactly promising, and... And, you know, as much as I don't want to think about last game to this game and compare the two, I, I kind of have to, looking at this. Yeah, we have a similar potential for General to get out of control uh, in the early game, which I will say that the, the Bristleback is definitely not going to be as bullied as a Nature's Prophet would be. And they have, you know, everything that you need in a draft. They have an active mid laner for Dendi, which he obviously is, uh, that, that's when Dendi's at his best. Excalibur is generally at his best at higher skill-based heroes. Uh, Bristleback is kind of a bit mindless in comparison. And Ooh. oh my god, that is a soul assumption at level one. And a fissure on the Oracle as well. And yeah, they got the Oracle. This is the same thing that happened in the lane the first time. I mean, now minus this kill on a Spartan, but geez, this general has been uh, so dominant in this off lane. Yeah, and that time he wasn't even enabled by a lot of dance that much. That was just... Usually, people don't take Soul Assumption at one, uh, especially as the core. You usually take Grave Chill so you can get more last hits, uh, or the Gravekeeper's Club so you can take some more abuse. As Aloha Dance, kind of... Yeah, he looks uh, very dead here. I'm not certain Spartan needed to take that kill with the Purifying Flames. I think one more Quill Spray would have done it, but they secure the kill either way. That's uh, fair enough. But looking and over at the other lane, is it... You know, where are you seeing any advantages here for bait? Like, is this going to... You said it comes down to mechanics. Like, right now, it looks like top's not going too amazingly, but are you seeing it anywhere else that they might be able to pull ahead with uh, any of these other other lanes? Mid lane was relatively even in the previous game, even though I thought the Templar Assassin would have, like, a way more significant advantage over the Leshrac. Uh, Dendi was keeping it competitive. So in the laning phase, I don't really expect anything to happen in the mid lane too much. Um, if, the, if a kill happens, it was an error from either side. And then the bot lane, it's yet again a five position bat rider um, who's laning up against a somewhat more difficult off lane with the Beastmaster Phoenix. These heroes can deal with the bat rider a lot easier. And mainly just because of the boar, mainly Beastmaster can deal with these heroes a lot easier. He's always on a fly, gonna give up his life for a courier. Well, the original plan was, I think, just to give up his life, but he happened upon a courier. It wasn't like that was the original idea, watching him just go straight to the tower and a courier pass his vision. 
Yeah, but he still does it an experience range of the Phoenix, uh, as opposed to going to the tier two tower, but I guess it doesn't really matter. He comes back to the lane with three mangoes and one mango for V-Tune, so I think he's just being the Ursus courier right now. Yeah, you know, going back to full health, full mana, he wasn't holding anything that could regen his mana. Now he comes back with three mangoes. So we, I was something that I was thinking, like, we're not seeing always want to fight, be as aggressive. But now that he's got these mangoes, now they can continue to to play aggressive with the sticky napalm. This might be the point where we see always want to fly really uh, start to have the Beastmaster struggle up against him. Yeah, but in the power of this boar, uh, usually like the, the go to hero or the go-to strategy against Beastmaster is like, I need some hero with cheap ranged nukes that can kill off the boars. Uh, because if I pick melee core, then they're not going to be able to do it. And so my support needs to be able to fulfill that necessity. And Batrider does not really do that. Uh, he may get a point in flame break at like level four, but even then that's not going to really do it. So this is a much better off lane for bait, just in terms of being able to deal with the Batrider. And now General, Ooh, he is taking a lot of abuse. Yeah, he's continuing to take a bunch of damage. He does have Soul Assumption ready to throw if he were to spot Spartan again, but uh, won't be able to do so. This is uh, certainly going a lot better for bait right now. I know we're only uh, four minutes or just about five minutes into the game, but that was 25% of the previous game. So it's a big chunk of what was the previous game here. And now the Fortune's End comes in on a General to try and chase to get the kill. The Soul Assumption comes through on an SSA Spartan. And uh, well, General will fall. Meanwhile, mid, Iceberg hits the deck as Dendi gets the kill. And uh, this is uh, going way better. Yes, they do lose Spartan over towards top, but this is now another kill as Aloha Dance falls to Excalibur and he's got himself a double. Yeah, and this Visage, Visage is going to be staying vulnerable all game long. He's not really going to actually always want to fly following LeBron here, who does not have Icarus death for another five seconds. He's burning oh, out pretty good for the fucking Zen. Oh, nice. Uh, Zen. LeBron? He's, you know. He should be fine. I know he's one on fly, we'll be dead. He costs an Oracle TP, but Bristleback does not need the help. Sometimes it would be kind of devastating to have your mid lane. TP, or to have to TP to the mid lane as a support, but Bristleback is like completely independent. He's level five, three points in Quill Spray. Uh, even v once Visage made to get familiars as Vtune will die to this Beastmaster. Wow, yeah, look at this laning phase. Look what happens when you pick a draft that doesn't lose at uh, minute zero. It just it feels like, you know, there could have been a kiss on the line, and there's not, and there was so much here leaning towards Bay potentially pushing this to a game three and winning their first game of the Pushka League, which we might see here. I know the net worth is pretty even, but this is certainly the start that they needed to uh, potentially make it a reality. So. Yeah, and so they can take it to late game very, very confidently as well. This was a great Bristleback game. Uh, as they're trying to go on melees, but Ooh. Dendi rotates. And always want to fly with the rotation from Dendi. They get not one, but potentially two, and there it should be, as Dendi gets the kill. Just things are going Fine. great. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see them doing well, because I was so tired of seeing them have, like, nothing redeeming to talk about, because I knew it was had to do with the drafts. So now Excalibur is... Uh, Trying to get the wraparound on General, and will be successful as they purge off that Grave Chill. General trying to survive with Aloha Dance, going over for Spartan. And with the Soul Assumption, will get the kill, but Excalibur continuing to move forward. Soul Assumption thrown at Excalibur once again, but eventually the Quills will be his demise. And General dies for it the second time in this top lane. Yeah, Visage had stick charges, but I don't think it would have mattered. As you can yeah, see, Excalibur's more done. than willing. Yeah, and yeah, he's, he's, gonna he's probably going to get the skill. There's uh, a lot going well for Lot Excalibur, but over bottom, Melee is trying to TP out. Do they have the damage? One more shot. Yes, they do. Melee's will fall. V-Tune will clean him up. They get something back in this bottom lane, but still 11 to 4, 1,000 net worth lead for bait. 15 kills at seven half minutes. This is the kind of CIS Dota I love to see. Uh, they managed to kind of successfully take the bot tier one. V-Tune does end up denying it, but 
I mean, the, the bot lane's tier one tower being taken this early in the game without really like a concerted effort is better than they did with their Nature's Prophet draft. <laughs> and this was just kind of passively happening as now LeBron, oh nice, cancel on the Icarus dive. Uh, always want to fly man just to get that flame break as the Phoenix was flying and they managed to snipe it. Good job to get a kill there. General was the uh, one who gets credit for that as his lane certainly not going as well as the as the uh, first one, but um, you know, kill there helps him recover. We'll see what he's able to do. He's still sticking here over mid, but Dendi has vision of General just staying on the high ground. Yeah, I think General just wants to find his level six somewhere. But if he goes back top, he knows that the Bristleback will just eat him alive. Long well, fortunes in on always one on a fly, but nobody there to follow that one up just yet. LeBron is making his way towards bottom. They've also got melees making the rotation, so always one on a fly will stop for a moment, and it looks like they should be able to get the kill onto this bat rider as he goes onto the high ground, lays down a ward, but ends up dying. One of the heroes that I was kind of curious about. Uh... So after the 20% nerf, uh, Beastmaster also got some fine tuning in the C patch. And he was one of the heroes that actually got like some significant changes. His Hawk cooldown talent, I think used to be level 25 and it was like 16 seconds. And now it got bumped down to level 15 and they changed his boar damage to be level 20. And so I'm curious now if Hawk cooldown is like a viable talent because at 25, it was not really viable. No one really. Uh, you would pick it, but just because I mean, Wild Axe damage was also pretty mediocre. But I'm curious if that like makes Beastmaster significantly better because the boar damage was incredibly valuable. So we'll see what Melez opts for. Is he's having a pretty solid early game. Yeah, look to go on to Iceberg. You didn't exactly land the way that they would have wanted it with the Fortune Zen as well as the Icarus dive, so they can't go. Talking back to that uh, Hawk cooldown, it puts. Uh... The Hawk cooldown at a 14 second cooldown. If I've done the math, or 16 it's second 16 cooldown. 16 second cooldown, yeah, and it lasts for a minute. So you can you can have like three Hawks out at a time, which is crazy. Yeah, is that better though than a six armor? It's all, that's a, good, a decent chunk of armor. It is, and especially against, in this game against a Templar Assassin, a Visage, and an Ursa, I'm expecting him to take the armor. But uh, at the same time, there are many drafts in which you're just against a bunch of magic damage, and I feel like a ton of Hawk Vision as they actually roar up the Beastmaster, I mean the Bat Rider in mid. And they get the kill and always want to fly. Iceberg's thinking about coming over for a second, but won't make the approach, as it's definitely a difficult one to come in on, as Bait are starting to focus this tier 1 tower mid. And surprisingly, Excalibur joins the fight. He's uh, got his Vanguard completed, and he's joining this mid tier 1. I was expecting him to kind of do what Fly to Moon were doing with V-Tune in game one, which is they had a great early game. Uh, let the Queen of Pain and the offlaner make most of the space, which in this case, it would have been the Beastmaster. And you just let the Bristleback get gigantic. Maybe even like go for a Radiance. Uh, I would have been fine with that in this game against a Templar Assassin and Ursa. But instead, he finishes off the Vanguard, momentarily drops in mid, but goes back top and Actually, opting for the full Crimson Garden is quick by, which is surprising. The the panel mentioned the value of Halberd this game, and I guess he doesn't really need it that early on. Uh, he can finish it as a second item, but uh, I, I see this Bristleback having a lot of potential to cause issues for the Flight of Moon draft, but it will be very, very dependent on the itemization as Ooh, they're actually going in on Shaker. Here. It's the Fortune Zen with the Icarus dive on the LeBron, and then the Echo Slam coming through from Aloha Dance. They'll try to get the kill onto the Phoenix at least, but they won't get that. Now False Promise used as Icebergs come over towards top of three of these heroes trying to get the kill onto this Templar Assassin. He goes into the meld and now has to focus this egg, but I'm not certain he'll survive it. He's burnt out, killed up, and killed off as Iceberg is melted. And Bodland, they're going on Mela's Flame Break, bounces him back, but he gets the roar off. Is on. And he's bored. And he's going to join in. He looks over at V2 and they get the lasso. They'll finish off melee. Stendi's here now with General and always want to fly around for the side of Fly to Moon. But uh, Fortune Zen on always want to fly. Dendi should have the easier kill. The potential too, but now he needs to make it out successfully. And he does have Blink available to leave if need be. He's going to keep going aggressive. Damage. Yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm very surprised that they got this Visage pick so early on, because it 
it was what an oracle and beastmaster uh and then they picked the visage after that like first pick of the second phase i did i mean it's it's not really that great of an oracle game i mean sorry that great of a visage game uh even before the bristleback came out i don't really see it necessarily being like that great because oracle as we saw in the landing phase is just like a pretty solid counter to grave shell and while there is a great deal of burst damage that you can pick up soul assumption and charges with with a that kind of lane it's still like you can't go aggressive this game as a visage and the bristleback just completely puts a cork in all of that so i am gonna struggle to see general to have even remotely the same impact that he had in game one on his weaver but maybe he's just there to enable his templar assassin as he does have the medallion completed and flight of moon can take roche extremely quickly if they manage to get like any map control so we'll see what they're able to accomplish. I mean, General, yeah, certainly, like you said, certainly not having the kind of impact that he had in game one. The, the kind of impact he had in game one was uh, some of the biggest impact. You see that early from a three position, but now taking a look over at Always Wanna Fly. One more shot comes in from Dendi, and this is just being, con continually being together. Uh, you know, as four or five, moving through mid, getting these kills, and really making Fly to Moon work for a, a bit of a defense. Oh, it's the Iceberg, Supernova, yeah, just straight up. Dive. And the Nova coming through, Excalibur looking forward. Low Hot Dance, he does have the Echo Slam. The Supernova doesn't really do as much as they would have hoped. B2 makes the rotation in, but now you need to find your opening to maybe turn this around. A, it was a trap, blink away from Dendi. Now they work on Excalibur, not the target that you really want to go after. They've got the False Promise, so they can be a little bit aggressive on the side of B. They also have the double damage pop by Dendi, so... Find a moon in a lot of trouble. He was always on a fly, sent up towards the side, but he gets spotted out by the Phoenix as well as Spartan, who throws the fortunes in. Shadow strike from Dendi. Always on a fly, backs off with Firefly onto his own high ground, and will sit there laying in wait. They have the Crimson Guard. They still have uh, half duration left on this double damage rune, so yeah, I don't imagine that they're going to ease up on this tier 2 push quite yet. And Melee is hunting for a roar target. Oh, Iceberg. Iceberg hit with the Primal Roar. They're going to jump in on this. He no longer has the Refraction. Taking a lot of damage. There's the Sonic Wave to get the kill. They take out this TA, and they have just overwhelmed Fly to Moon in this mid lane and continually taking out Iceberg. This is a big difference from Game 1 to Game 2. He is 0-3 and 1 at the moment. I'm so proud of them. They grow up so fast. Because this is like, Bait had always the right ideas. Like, in game one, you saw that they were like, oh god, we got this Nature's Prophet, we have to push really, really fast. But they just didn't have the draft to enable it. And so I never really had any issues with their map movements or their, like, overarching strategy. It's just that, you know, even if you have the right idea, if your five heroes aren't built for that idea, then you can't do anything. But here, they're grouping up, they're me meeting their timings very very well like queen of pain doesn't even have a major item completed and they took down two sets of towers in the mid lane and that's just because excalibur was like yo i'm i'm not gonna farm up to like ultra late game status i'm just gonna get this crimson guard and we can just start partying right away and he's bullying iceberg again uh, iceberg is just continually getting run down but they've got the lasso on bristleback can they get a kill here the spartan oracle is coming through good fissure on a three echo slam falls and i'll take it out spartan lebron Excalibur's Courier will fall with him. And now they look for Dendi. That's a big turnaround for Fly to Moon. Yeah, he oversteps his bounds a little bit too much as the Bristleback and gets punished for it pretty significantly. It's just a shame that the rest of Bait were trying to save him. If they did manage to get the False Promise on him, that could have been another Iceberg kill. Uh, but the Oracle, unfortunately, got slammed out of existence by Aloha Dance, who does have that Blink Dagger completed. I, did, did he blink in to get that slam, or did he complete he it afterwards? Blink, he had the blink prior, but I'm okay. not certain if he blinked in to get that. I think he just kind of walked and had the stun. Luckily enough, hit between the Phoenix and the, and the uh, Oracle, because it was during Nicarus die by Bodhi. Well, and well played by him, and a great reveal of that Blink Dagger. So now it's back to even, and that's what I was thinking, you know, is this Blink Dagger going to be a big game changer with the Echo Sun? Because there was definitely moments in that high ground siege over by the tier three, or not the high ground siege, but the kill on Iceberg, where if he had a Blink Dagger, he could have thrown a very big Echo. Uh, the positioning from bait going up towards that kill, that Iceberg wasn't exactly amazing uh, to prevent something like that. 
Yeah, and now I can provide more of a distraction so everyone doesn't have to focus the Templar Assassin constantly. Seeing a Did lot of... Oh, ooh, and the totem hitting with Bronn. They're gonna look over at Iceberg and Shadow Strike, Fortune's End, Iceberg taking a lot of damage. He goes into the meld and he is left all alone. They'll try to TP away, but the Primal Roar comes in as well as the Sonic Wave. They get the kill on Iceberg, they take him out again. Nobody there to really help him out. He was all by his own himself. Oh, and now General's in trouble. If not him, then his familiars. <laughs> he just gets a four-man stun with that stone form. And he will be able to escape. And they're actually not going to finish off his familiars. They're just going to keep trying to hunt for him. When they go into Roche. They'll try to take this, uh, this first Aegis. It's going to be tough. It's not exactly... The easiest Roche to take, the easiest pit to secure, general. as I did at <laughs> Now look at General, he is taking wow. that kind of space again. The Supernova comes in, they will get the kill. He loses his life, and uh, well, the Supernova is now down going back into this, though. Yeah, I mean, that that's 100% worth it for the Phoenix. Templar Assassin is up, but there's no way that she's going to go for this without having her Blink Dagger completed. So it's up to always want to fly. He may give up his life for it, and will fail. Yeah, he's not going to get it. Aloha Dance now getting focused. This is giving enough time for maybe somebody to help out, but if you're going to die one by one by one, uh, I don't know if you can stop this at Dude, all Dude, Vtune, it's your turn now. Let's go into the pit. Maybe you can steal the Aegis. Who knows? <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover, send Vtune over. <laughs> yeah, they will take it. And Fly to Moon fall right into Bates' trap. They, they thought that they could contest it. And they did it very piecemeal. General rolls in in the back lines. He's like, ah, I can maybe pick up this Phoenix. And Phoenix is like, man, I don't give a shit. I'll supernova for this. I don't <laughs> care. We'll win a fight in the pit even without that. And so General goes down. The battle rider's like, well, maybe I could just, you know, just like pop on over this this uh, cliff area real quick and sneak myself. Oh, actually, General is going to manage to stop this outpost being claimed. A Spartan was uh, warding or something? I don't know. Spartan, if he had helped out with that outpost, they could have maybe claimed the bot outpost, but. Instead, uh, it's going to go one and one apiece. But yeah, it was a uh, failed attempts by Fly to Moon on multiple situations, and they give up like three kills in the end, or four kills in the end, and lose the Aegis. Just to, uh, ooh. oh, wow. Oh, my melee dash. Forcing the Primal Roar out. And uh, I think Fly to Moon are pretty happy with that, knowing that that control is no longer there. However, I don't know if they're going to be happy with Vtune trying to continue forward because he's in a lot of trouble. He will get the kill onto the Beastmaster before he dies, but I don't think he really needed to give up his life for that. Now they look over at the Batrider as he's been lifted up with the Yules. Flame Break to push away LeBron. Now he'll try to TP out of the Fortunes. Then again, a Spartan is on it. Yep. That man has canceled so many TPs, it's not even funny. <laughs> I, I think they're they're in their mind, they're like, ah, they have no stuns on bait. We should be able to TP at our leisure. And Spartan's like, it's okay. I don't need a stun. I just need this route. And you will not be able to get out of any of our gank attempts. And his positioning has been on point consistently. And, and usually whenever you think of Oracle positioning, you think of clutch false promise ults. Uh, but in this situation, it's just been him canceling, like, th that man must have like a thousand Dota Plus relics at this point for <laughs> TP cancels, because he is on fire. General, and now the Yules again. Uh, well, I'll just TP out. It's still not working. But General is starting to turn this. He does have the help from Aloha Dance, potentially to throw a stun in. But now with the numbers coming over from the side of bait, Aloha Dance, it might just be a defensive fissure to help out. However, Denny oh. taking a lot of damage. And all of a sudden, there goes the Aegis. They've got the Primal Roar, they'll get the kill on a general. I think LeBron was maybe thinking Supernova, but not necessary. They're searching for Aloha Dance with that Sun Rain. He gets around, but Spartan is here, and now the Yules comes in once again. It's not going to be available for Iceberg, who now turns his attention over to Dendi. Supernova comes through, and the Bash is on the Dendi. They get the kill. Now they look over the Beastmaster. They've got the lasso with it. They'll take out Melee. Now Spartan's the focus of their damage and anchor because they are really looking to kill off this oracle who uses the false promise and just slapping away at a hero you know is gonna die is a oh, very the phoenix too. On top of it, down goes the phoenix triple kill here for iceberg and a four for one in the favor of fly to moon wow uh, and all that time i uh, excalibur's tp is on cooldown but i'm not quite sure what happened because 
That was like a that was a relatively long fight that the Bristlebike was just not present for. And they had control of the top outpost. And they have their top tier two. And that is that you you need you need Bristleback to show up to that kind of fight because Bristleback is not the kind of core that you are making space for. Bristleback is the kind of core that will join into any brawl as soon as he sees it happening. Especially he's got the second item Halberd and he went for a team item Crimson Guard, so a little bit of uh, miscommunication with Excalibur cost them four lives on bait, and suddenly the net worth kind of starting to shift back again in Fly to Moon's favor. Vtune as these Ursa getting quite large, going to go for his BKB after finishing off his Basher and Mask of Madness. Uh, obviously, the Blink Dagger has been completed for the Templar Assassin. She's also going to go for a BKB, although mid lane always want to fly. This time they didn't even need a cancel. They will just have enough damage to finish him off, and they smoke up now. Was was the creep right there to see them smoke? No, I think it was still on the low ground. They are going to smoke. They are going to try and pull this back. It was a uh, what at most a, a two thousand net worth lead for the side of uh, or a three thousand net worth lead for the side of it. But it is come back down to uh, I don't want to say reality, but definitely something <laughs> the close status to quo, perhaps. Yeah, that that's the things were. Approach. Things were going too well, suspiciously well, well for bait, that at some point Flight of Moon needed to equalize it, and they did indeed. Uh, Melee has an arcane rune and wants to roar literally anything that he sees. He didn't exactly have everybody there to help him out on that one, if he were to just roar on that. Shadow Blade for, um, for the Earthshaker. Aloha Dance gets his hands on a Blink and a Shadow Blade. He has got a lot of farm. He's got more than general. Yeah, that was kind of uh, his thing in the last game also. He's just very, very skilled on the Shaker at managing to find farm as now always want to fight. Trying to do some no, counter oh, with again. his life. Oh boy, burned out by that. Sunray gets to the high ground, not gonna matter. The axes fly through from Melee's and the kill is gonna fly once again. Somehow Radiant uh, are still drawing Dire around the map as they were pushing the bot tier 2 and then they just kind of like lose interest in it instantly as they start moving mid to maybe find a kill. I, uh, I, I will say that the late game is still Fly to Moon favored. Uh, as, as much as this Ursa is going to get kited out and as big of a deal as this Bristleback is, uh, I feel like the split pushing potential of Fly to Moon will be very, very irritating for Bait to deal with because they can just have Visage, you know, with his familiars be taking some stuff. Uh, Iceberg may eventually work his way to an Aghanim Scepter on this Templar Assassin, which is becoming more and more in vogue. So that would be something that would Bait would struggle to deal with. So if they have the opportunity to take towers now, they should really seize it. And I'm surprised that they just kind of give up on that bot tier 2 push. Yeah, it seems like Flying and Moon are still kind of pulling them around on strings a little bit. Yeah. And it's not really working out for bait. They need to kind of take those objectives. They have the ability to take them pretty quickly, and they should try to focus on that. It's possible that they're just waiting until the second Roche, but the second Roche is not going to come free. Uh, both teams are more than willing to throw bodies as it, at it, which, if it's a full-on fight, bait definitely can win a full fight. But if Flight and Moon get like a pick on the Beastmaster, then all of a sudden they can just send Ursa and TA into the pit and then take Roche in like 40 seconds probably. Setting up, a little hot dance. You might not have an opportunity here at an Echo Slam, but they do split up long enough where only the Fissure hits on a Spartan. Meanwhile, General taking the bottom tier one. He is now the one pushing the bot lane. He's also going into a Shadow Blade, interestingly enough. Yeah, I I guess maybe one of them really needs the Silver Edge to deal with the Bristleback. And Aloha Dance doesn't really want to have to use his invisibility to go punch the Bristleback, but would rather use it for initiation purposes, as they actually they see Aloha him. Dance. Yeah, they had a good ward here to get the vision, but he goes into the, into the Shadow Blade, so he'll leave for the moment, but now shows oh. up. Supernova goes down, the BKB's been popped by Iceberg, they've got the Primal Roar onto the TA. Nice right it's gonna pop it just at the end, there it goes. The Primal Roar that was out as well as the Sonic Wave, they get the kill and always want to fight. They look over now at V-Tune. The chase is on to try and kill this Ursa, but they have locked, used their lockdown already. And as I say that though, they've got the clumsy net, and well, Ursa's in some trouble. Fissure comes through, it's not gonna save the life of V-Tune, and two kills there for bait. Uh, very good fight from them, and uh, comes off the back of this ward. 
Man, what a godlike roar by Melos. He, he, he manages to stun out the Templar Assassin so that she can't finish off the Queen of Pain, and it shoves the Ursa back that the Ursa is not able to, not in a position to get a single attack off and then super slow afterwards. So he tries to Earthshock his way over to the egg, can't even finish off the egg, and Templar Assassin does make it out, but great fight. And oh, well, that is a dead Phoenix. Not sure what LeBron was doing there, but he will die. Yeah, too, with that fissure and uh, loses his life. Aloha Dance has been kind of on it with the placement of his fissures. Melee's needs to start sending Hawks into the pit now, because Roche can respawn. It's actually a very, very, very late Roche respawn, which uh, doesn't really favor either team. Coming around on the Melee's, they've got the vision. Oh, oh the Queen Break on the high ground! But, ooh, Fissure stops that TP. They'll keep always want to fly right on top of him. The right click's coming through from Iceberg, and now they will get the kill there onto the Beastmaster. They also take out the Oracle. Phoenix is already dead from before, so three heroes gone, and he still won't set up in a roast just yet, though. Yeah, they were pinging it. They really want to take it, but it's not up yet. And so they will try to establish as much vision in the surrounding areas as possible, probably get a bunch of sentry wards to make sure that they can spot out a hawk because again if it's a full five on five engagement bait will probably win it it is dependent on where the phoenix supernova is and how convenient it will be for ursa and templar assassin to just jump on it but for right now those handful of deaths definitely lose them a bunch of map control because even without wards ta has set up like a bunch of traps on the perimeter of the dire stairs one thing uh, I was noting just to go back to that we spoke about in the early parts of this game was uh, whether or not he'd go the armor or the Hawk's cooldown. He does go into the armor. We talked about how the armor was probably the better choice in this game. But uh, I, I was just interested to potentially see the Hawk cooldown come out. Yeah, I think it has potential, uh, but not this game. <laughs> not against these heroes. Not against a Solar Crest Visage and a level 22 Iceberg Templar Assassin working her way to that now one second Meld Bash as it did get nerfed by the 20% patch as Aloha Dance on the run. And into the Shadow Blade, four seconds till he's got that blink. He makes his way out of the eyes of four heroes here from bait. Roche is up, so no team can afford to give up any picks. They need, like, everyone alive. Both teams have Pretty decent Roche pit potential here. Yeah, if one of them smokes on the other, then like, not neither of them can smoke into the pit, but if one of them smokes to get a pick, as it looks like that will be what Fly to Moon do, they can very easily turn the tides with their 5k net worth advantage. They're already in a pretty good position. Oh, Excalibur. Excalibur, the one out in front. Now he goes to the low ground. Ooh, he's very exposed. He's away from his team. They're actually going to go for the rest. They've got themselves the lasso onto the Oracle. The Sunray trying to keep him alive. Sandy comes over. There's the Fissure hitting out of the Oracle. And now blinking forward is Iceberg. They'll get the kill on the Spartan so they no longer have that false promise. They'll buy back on the Oracle immediately. Always want to fight dies as well. He'll buy back too. I'm a roar out on an Iceberg. Pop that BKB trying to run for the Supernova as well as Excalibur. He's sitting pretty low, but V2 maybe you're looking ready to oh, initiate no. on this. That was the Sonic Wave that came up way short from Dendi. Dendi looking over into the Roche pit for a moment, but they're going to lose a LeBron or will they? They've got the heels as well as the False Promise, the Fortunes, and stops the TP of General. A good fissure, but not enough to save the life of this visage. And it ends up being a two for one with five acts used by both the Phoenix as well as the Batrider. And they also lost General. Dude, Spartan yeah, is playing out of his mind right now. <laughs> he manages to get the Ghost Scepter off like right as the lasso was connecting, and so the Templar Assassin can't immediately follow up with a one-two shot in that lasso duration. So instead, the TA has to wait like way later than she wanted to to kill off the Oracle, and then she's super out of position, and Beastmaster is able to get a very, very convenient roar. And then it seems like the Phoenix was going to die to the Familiars, but just a last-minute false promise ends up saving the Phoenix as well, and. Spartan pretty much single-handedly salvages what could have been a, uh, a brutal initiation as always want to fly getting the lasso on him could have been Roche winning but instead flips around the other way and still a net worth advantage for Fly to Moon but that second Roche was critical and uh, they end up opting to give it to the Queen of Pain again. Uh, the first one was kind of surprising. I, I, I was surprised that they gave the Queen, oh, lasso. 
onto her. Okay. There's a lot of TP up wall. Echo Slam? Oh, I don't know about that. I did get the Aegis out of the hands of the Queen of Pain, but now Ohan Dance, he's looking like he's gonna die. They've got the totem summing up too. Duels is there from Dendi Blink. and oh. Blink. Oh. Yeah, the oh, shot is What a player. Tip man. tip that man. <laughs> oh man, that was clutch. Wow. That his own Yules saved him and just narrowly manages to have all of his cooldowns available. Uh, so I was saying that, oh yeah, you know, you can give Queen of Pain the Aegis in the second life so she can like play more of an initiating role, <laughs> but so much for that. Let me tell you, if Bristleback had that Aegis, they would not have been able to just snipe him out like that. But then again, Dendi may have just outright died, so I guess it goes both ways, but whatever the case, that is now gone, and the cheese is still on Bristleback, so they'll have that, but <laughs> that's a quick snipe of the Aegis. And then to get Aloha Dance out on that, whoa! Iceberg's got a divine rapier. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, exactly the, the thought I had. What? Oh my god, okay. I, I did not think we were at that point of the game, but hell yeah, put me in, coach. He, there's like no potential for like an Aegis for like a really long time also. Man, yeah. I've been putting on a show at the end of Division 1. Let's go. See, what happened was, he was like, it took me two attacks to have to kill the Oracle? Unacceptable. I it's want the be... one and done. I got <clears throat> Noticing that uh, Always Wanna Fly is 1 in 13. It's not exactly had a fun game, but he has done his part. 10 assists. You know, he's involved in 11 of the 18 kills that they have. Certainly not the worst uh, game overall. This is what most people were expecting in game one when you're like, you pick a bat rider into an oracle? Why would you do such a thing? And then he was like, I don't care. This game, Spartan, again, he's he's playing above and beyond expectations. Oh, they Focus see him. Now. Focus now for me is Iceberg. He's holding this Divine Rapier. I feel like this is a very... It is a scary moment. Like, yes, you want to fight. Yes, you've got the damage and you should feel confident in that. But you was that Divine Rapier and you were in uh, a world of hurt. And Bruceback, like, is not a hero that will give it back up. In some games when it's like on a PA and some other squishy hero, then you see some Divine Rapier hot potato. But this game, it's going to be lost and gone forever if Iceberg somehow dies. And they're looking like they want a race, which I actually don't know who wins this race. Visage versus Beastmaster, but Bait will not oblige and they will come back to defend. They've got four here. Crystal still pushing out mid for a little bit. Excalibur gets that creep wave over to the tier three. Oh, yeah. The liquor is time. They've got the Yules. Fortune's in. Locking up General. Sunray on top of him. There's the flame break to try and help him get away. The Fissure hits onto a couple of these heroes on the side of Fate, but General still dead. Hmm. I will say the, the psychological impact of putting a rapier on the game also is pretty dramatic. Like, players will play differently as soon as they've seen a rapier. Both both the team that has it, both the team that's against it. Because then all of a sudden, like the whole net worth idea you had in your mind completely goes out the window because sometimes you can feel it in the game. You're like, okay, you know, I have, uh, we're probably stronger. Uh, but even if you are stronger and you're going up against a rapier, now this will- They've got themselves the false promises as well as the Icarus dot coming in on a V-tune. Fortune's end. Melius now looking to go the other direction with this one as he does have the primal war ready. He'll blink, go into the tree. Is good positioning for Melius, but the BKB's been popped by this uh, by this Ursa. Dendi comes in, they're doing a lot of damage. He'll try to TP out, and just with a minuscule amount of health, before the supernova goes off, is he able to escape? That, that BKB lasted for way longer than it felt. It was an eight second BKB, but he was able to tank an entire primal roar and still managed to survive uh, long enough to TP out uncontested. So, wow, that was very, very close. They've somehow managed to buy time for Iceberg, who now does have buyback. So at least he's not gonna be totally out of the fight, but he will lose a lot of his net worth, obviously, if he does manage to go down. So Fly to Moon are playing this fast and loose. Fissure oh, just on the edge. They've also got the lasso onto the Phoenix. Abyssal Blade follows it up and two shot there. Get the kill. 
a bit unnecessary to have to use the Abyssal for that, as they knew that the ult was down for the Oracle, but they want to get these kills as quickly as possible. And now uh, BKB back up in two seconds for Fly to Moon's uh, Ursa, so they can go hunting again. Got the Abyssal up at 9 and waiting for somebody to come over. Oh, well, damn, since that the Shadow Blade finally comes back out, and he's looking to uh, find, you know, the Echo Slime of Echo Slimes here in this game, if uh, Bait were to join them in the dance of a fight. Yeah, Initiation is now, like, really, really strong for Flight of Moon. They've got the Abyssal on the Ursa, as we mentioned. They've got Aloha Dance, who's stacked as hell with uh, Shadow Blade, Yule's Blink, and they have level 25 Meld Bash on Iceberg, so... and obviously the Lasso. So, if they manage to find anyone, they can immediately snipe him out. He's now on the fly. He will probably die. On the run, and, well, Bendy should be able to take the kill with the help of Excalibur and Will. He does have the uh, AoE Shadow Strike. On top of that, he had the Prince's Knife, too. Oops, it's for both sides. Yeah, definitely feels like a very close game, and it teeters on the edge because of that Divine Rapier. Oh, no. Fine. <laughs> Teed, and Iceberg's uh, staying like, oh man, if he can get, oh no, he sends the Illusionist Cape back, damn, it would have been such a sick bait with the Rapier and the Cape, but he needs the Minotaur Horn. I was gonna say, he now picks up the Daedalus, he <laughs> did get another 2300 gold, he doesn't have buyback at the moment, but it's, it, it's a bad thing to lose the Divine Rapier. I think it's still salvageable because of what the TAs picked up afterwards with the Daedalus. But it's certainly not the end-all be-all. Uh, You're saying that least... she should save for buyback, at least. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, going to a fight without buyback could be uh, game-ending. Whoa, at least Dendi. You have Dendi. Super Dendi. aggressive. Dendi. Nobody yeah. else with okay. Yeah, Radiant had no vision of that, then they're like, there's no way this Queen of Pain is blinking all alone. Instead, they get an Abyssal Blade on Bristleback to find out the Earthshaker. Yeah, he was under the Sentry Ward. They get the kill on Oloha Dance. Just happened to stumble upon that Sentry and ends up dead. He's got Roche number first. three is available with a Refresher Orb. And that would be pretty value for, like, Either the Beastmaster, or the Oracle, or the Phoenix. Really, there's a lot of heroes that can take advantage of this, so Shaker will buy back. Can he get here quick enough, though? Oh, baby, hold on to your butts. Flamebreak coming through. General with these familiars gets the stun out on Excalibur. Roche getting low. Sunrays there. The BKB is going to be popped by Vtune as well as Iceberg. They got the Abyssal Blades going back and forth. As I believe the Abyssal Blade came out from Excalibur after Vtune used it. Got the Aegis. Iceberg. And now LeBron's getting hit the deck. They look over the Sonic Wave. Comes in from Zendi. He's taking a lot of damage. The False Promise keeps him alive as he's able to blink away. But, anyways, he's been stunned up. The Fortune's End is there, but it's not going to be enough to save his life. They'll lose the Beastmaster. He doesn't have buyback. He's dead for six to seven seconds, but they get the kill on a general. Also, General, he has buyback. He'll use it immediately. They look over Zendi. They've got that kill. The Supernova is down. It's they're going to be able to pop it. They get that kill and always want to find They take the Aegis out of the hands of Iceberg. So now Excalibur doing all he can. He's got the Abyssal Blade up in five seconds. They're going to need help here for the TA. But TA disarmed. Aloha Dance comes in. The Refresher Shard. There's the Echo Slam. Kills off LeBron. He no longer has buyback. They look over at SSA Spartan. They've got the trap down. He uses the Ghost Scepter to survive a little bit longer. The BKB's been popped by Iceberg, but they'll get the kill. And he comes over. Excalibur trying to do what he can as B-Tune is sitting low. The Abyssal Blade is there on the TA. Can they get the kill on Iceberg? It looks like they're going to get close, but no cigar. Excalibur ends up low and there's the soul subject to get the kill they look over at Denny he's hit with the trap blinks away nobody on the bait has oh. buyback so we'll oh, dance. Dance. We'll go after Dendi and we'll leave him to tell the tale of the fight that just happened to everybody back at the base damn I was hoping for some sick drop the blink dagger on the ground so it doesn't get cancelled by shadow strike plays from Aloha dance but they don't really need to they handedly win that fight, that Refresher uh, Shard on Iceberg managing to give him a second BKB to just go face first in the Bristleback and get fat crits with that Rapier. I can't believe Iceberg, nerves of steel, managing to go into the pit, steal that Aegis, steal the cheese and the orb, and they're just going to end the game. Damn, that is a heartbreaker for bait. They played so well this game, but Rapier Dota. 
not over just yet, but Dendi gets hit with the Abyssal Blade. Primal Roar comes in, now it's much more over as he's dead for two minutes. And GG will be called. Bait was close, but no cigar. They put on a show and they made it look incredibly competitive.